high fans of high quality entertainment. Welcome to my latest video in which I do some more CD, some more mystery CD reviews. That's it. Now, sometimes I just uh, grab a CD here. I don't know what I'm grabbing and then I review it. But the, the thing with this, the, the problem with that is I've, you know, reviewed quite a few of these CDs. So what I did was I picked out five that I haven't really talked about too much. And so it's a mystery to you, but it's not a mystery to me. So let's begin. You should find something interesting in this selection of CDs that I just picked. Actually, uh, the ones, the first CD, I'm going to talk about their whole discography. I'm changing it up a bit. And this first CD, the one I picked was The Clash's Sandinista, which came out as a uh, three record set on vinyl, of course, and now it's a two CD. But I have their whole discography except for Cut the Crap because even they, when they remastered the CDs in this uh, special box set, they didn't include that because, of course, Mick Jones had left them. It just wasn't really The Clash. But I have their debut album, The Clash. Now, I believe... I'm not sure if this... I think there was an, um, an American version and a, of course, British version. So I'm not sure which one I have. I think it's the, the British version. It starts with Janie Jones. I don't know if you can read the printing on that. It's kind of yellow. But uh, I bought this when it came out back in the day. Yes, I was into some punk music like the Sex Pistols and the Clash, of course. And I loved it right away. So I've always really liked that album. Their second album, produced by uh, Blue Easter Cult's producer Sandy Perlman. I'm holding the wrong CD. Well, <laughs> the Clash, give them enough rope. I just could never get into it. I was really disappointed in it. Uh, the murky production, the songs just just didn't cut it, except Safe European Home, the beginning of the album I really loved. Safe European Home, English Silver, Silver War, Civil War, uh, Tommy Gunn, and then it started to go downhill with uh, Julie's Been Working for the Drug Squad and all of the other songs just... I've tried to get into it, and I just, yeah. But then, of course, they came back very strongly-ish with London Calling. And this, of course, was a double vinyl album. I loved it right away. But the thing is, with, you know, this happens with some other uh, albums, Talking Head 77, Electric Light Orchestras, Out of the Blue. It's an album I love right away, and I think, oh my god, this is one of the greatest albums ever. But then after I've heard it a handful of times, it's like, okay, I've heard it. It's, I've, I've had this in my collection now for, you know, a few years, and I don't even remember the last time I played it. I still remember all of the songs, and I like all of the songs, but I don't have any urge to, to play it. And then there's the expanded version of uh, their EP, Black Market Clash. This is Super Black Market Clash, and I really enjoyed listening to that, especially when it came out. It's got uh, Groovy Times, Gates of the West, Capital Radio, uh, Robber Dub. You know, there's some dub music in it, which I liked. And uh, yeah, so good album. And the last original album with the four members, Combat 
rock, which overall I really did like a lot. Although I have to admit, after hearing Rock the Caspa on the radio so much, and uh, Should I Stay or Should I Go, I really don't care for those songs. I'm just, there's so many other great Clash songs that, that I love a lot more. I, I'm not saying I hate the songs, it's just, well, maybe with <laughs> Rock the Caspa, it's kind of kind of gets on my nerves. But I love Know Your Rights, Car Jamming. Uh, Street to Hell is probably my favorite on the album. But the one I wanted to talk about was the one released after London Calling. Sandinista, The Clash. And... My first wife, Nancy, it's when we were just dating, she bought it for me. Uh, I think it was a birthday present. And it's not that I was disappointed with it. It was just like, it just kind of dragged on because it was three discs. I loved the beginning of it. And then it, it just got really repetitive. And I hated some of the songs. and But I kept listening and listening and listening. And... It is my favorite Clash album because if I if I had to put on a Clash CD, it would be this one, uh, the Magnificent Seven. It starts out so so damn strong. It does you know kind of peter off, but the, the beginning is is just incredible. The Magnificent Seven, Hitsville, UK, Junko Partner, Ivan meets GI Joe, the leader. Uh, and there's one song on this that isn't even sung by The Clash. It is Lose This Skin. It is one of my favorite Clash songs. The guy's voice, uh, I'd have to look it up, but the guy's voice on the song is really <laughs> kind of annoying, and but I love it. It's just something about, about the track. It's uh, very Unclash-like. And uh, the ending of the album with career opportunities with, with the kids singing, I thought it was funny. It was kind of, like, cute. So overall, it's definitely my favorite Clash album. I won't rate them out of ten. That, that gets boring after a while. On to the other four CDs. Now, I've talked about this in the past, I think, on my Larry Graves TV channel. So I wanted to bring it up again. Because if you're a fan of Led Zeppelin, and especially Jimmy Page, John Bonham, if you haven't heard this, you should check it out. It is Lord Such and Heavy Friends. It was released, I think, around 1970. And it features Jimmy Page, John Bonham, Jeff Beck, Noel Redding, and Nicky Hopkins. And Jimmy Page is on some of the songs, and Jeff Beck is on some of the songs. I love the songs mainly with Jimmy Page on guitar and John Bonham on drums. Now, the thing about Lord Such is he sucked at singing. He wasn't very good, but he was a personality. So, so the worst thing about this album is definitely the vocals. Although, my favorite song on this is... Flashing lights, and I, I, even the vocals are really good on this track. So if you have not heard this album, I suggest you look up Flashing Lights by Lord Such. It's got some great guitar work by uh, Jimmy Page and, of course, John Bonham on drums. Uh, some of the songs are a little silly, I guess, and overblown, but overall, I like it. Now, this album is one of my favorite albums of all time. It would be probably at least in my top 50. And I bought it at a in a cutout bin. I used to buy so many albums and cutout bins when I was young. So I was probably maybe 14, 15. And it's the first blues rock album that
that I absolutely loved. And I've loved it, like I said, through the years. And I finally bought it on CD. I actually think, uh, last time I looked it up on Amazon, this CD is, is rare now, and it's like $200. I could be wrong, though. I've been wrong once before. And it is Canned Heat. I believe this was their, I think their fourth album. Hallelujah. And I have other Canned Heat CDs, Future Blues, and their earlier albums, which I absolutely love. But this is my favorite. Same All Over, uh, Change My Ways, Canned Heat, the song Canned Heat, Sick and Pigs, my favorite Canned Heat song. Uh, there's one, one song on this, uh, I think it's uh, Get Off My... I, I believe it's Get Off My Back. It's a great song, but there's this one section where it's just like a guitar solo. And you know how they uh, they would pan the stereo. <laughs> it would pan so much that it would fade the guitar solo out completely and then come back. and Just really uh, annoying. But overall, I love the vocals by uh, Alan Wilson. I love his heart playing. Uh, his guitar work, and uh, Bob Height, the other lead singer. Just, I love the album. If you've never heard Can't Heat, check them out. <sighs> Two more to go. Sparks and Genesis. This is... Now, Little, Little Beethoven, an album by Sparks, had great reviews. And uh, I think it, for most Sparks fans, it's a favorite. Not, not every, every Sparks fan, of course, but for most Sparks fans, it's one of their best albums. And the thing about it is, it's really repetitive. And so the first time you play it, it's like, oh my God, they're just repeating things. They're repeating. I mean, Ron Mayle is one of, I consider him one of the, the best songwriters, you know, lyrics. But this one, uh, there's a lot of repetitive repeating of maybe the title of the song or whatever. There's one song on, on this called, My Baby's Taking Me Home. And very simple lyrics. And the first time you hear it, it, you'll probably think, oh my God, this is so boring and annoying. But if you keep listening to it, you play it again, I, all, I can almost promise you will love the song. There's a, a video for the song on YouTube, so just check out Sparks, My Baby's Taking Me Home. But play it more than once, and you might actually fall in love with fall in love with them. So yeah, highly recommend you checking out Little Beethoven, but give it a chance. And finally, people have asked me, once in a blue moon, to review Genesis albums. And I actually, on my ASMR channel, I might do sort of like an unboxing unbox of the Genesis box set that I have, which includes the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. And the thing about this album is I love some of it and some of it just, just bores me. I've just never been able to get into it. So once again, the album st starts out really strong for me. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, Fly on a Windshield, Broadway Melody of 1974, Cuckoo, Cocoon, In the Cage, The Grand Parade of Lifeless Packaging. My favorite song is Carpet Crawlers. And... See, I just... Some of these, the, the later songs on the album, like... Uh, Silent Sorrow and Empty Boats. I wouldn't even remember it. I've, like I've said, I've tried in the past to get into it and just fail every time. But uh, overall, 
I do like the album. But uh, it's not a favorite. I like the earlier Genesis. And I just have to say this about Peter Gabriel. Peter Gabriel, in those years with Genesis, possibly one of my favorite singers. Even in, in his uh, the early part of solo career, have I rambled enough? Thanks for watching. I really appreciate those that have watched the whole video. Remember to thumbs up the video. I would really appreciate it, and I will see you again soon. I might do a video soon on the Beatles' best guitar solos, although. Or I might just talk about it, I don't know yet. But uh, stay tuned for that.